Hey everyone, Daniel Marchana here, and today we're taking a look at all the new awesome features in the second official beta of Android Q. Stay tuned. Alright, so I've got the official Android Q Beta 2 running on my Google Pixel 3 and uh, the original Beta 1 running on my Google Pixel 2 to kind of show us some comparisons and the differences that they've changed between the two betas. Now, uh, they haven't really changed a whole lot between these two builds uh, and there are some reasons why you may not want to run this build uh, over the previous build. So we'll get into that in just a few moments here. So let's go ahead and get started with the things that have changed. Uh, so one of the things that have changed, we're gonna go ahead and unlock the device here. When you take a uh, screenshot now, it no longer shows the rounded corners and uh, the um, rounded corners and the notch that we saw in the previous build. So I'll go ahead and open up the screenshots here. Um, you know, you can see there that there's no rounded corners. Remember last time it showed those black cutouts? We knew that was obviously not something they intended to keep. Uh, you know, but they went ahead and fixed that here. If you have a Google Pixel 3, you don't have that huge cutout in your screenshots. Uh, the second thing that they've gone ahead and done is they've actually implemented their file management changes. Now, for me so far, I haven't really noticed this, uh, but this is something that will affect certain applications like the Mi Explorer uh, will be broken due to some of these uh, changes, these file management changes. And we have a breakdown of them over on xdadevelopers.com. The volume panel has gotten a, a pretty big uh, facelift, at least, uh, actually, it's given a second menu. Uh, so you're familiar with the volume controls here uh, over on the side that they brought in with Android P. And uh, while that was nice, it got rid of the option of being able to change some of the other ringtones and alarms and things like that. Well, they've brought that back. You'll see this, this new button down on the bottom. You tap that. And now you've got a new menu here where you can go ahead and change your media volume, call volume, ring volume, and your alarm volumes. And if you hit see more, it'll bring you right to the settings menu where you can go ahead and adjust any other settings related to ringtones and so on and so forth. So that's a pretty neat update that they've gone ahead and made with the uh, second beta. Uh, sharing the screenshot, uh, you now have the image that you're sharing in your contextual menu here in the share sheet. And now I'm not noticing this happening with other things. I tried sharing images that I downloaded, images from the web. Uh, they don't reflect here, but it does show the, uh, the screenshot that you took. And unfortunately, Oh, so I accidentally tapped that. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get it to um, show you the image that you're sharing in more detail. Like, for instance, uh, if you wanted to go ahead and edit it or anything like that from, uh, you know, this menu, like, oh, I saw something I need to change. You can't tap on it and, and change anything with the image. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. That probably would have been useful to put, like, an edit button there uh, to go ahead and make changes to that screenshot. Uh, one of the other things uh, that they've gone ahead and done, we'll take another quick screenshot to get a notification going here. Uh, you can change the direction that you swipe. Uh, so you'll remember that you can no longer swipe notifications this way. Well, if you go into the settings menu, you're going to see a brand new option under apps and notifications. And uh, where was it? It's under notifications. It's called the notification assistant. Now, notification assistant doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot right now, but I guarantee this is something that we'll be seeing uh, a lot more of in the future. Turn off nut like there, kind of makes it look bad. Uh, so if we go ahead and swipe down on this into advanced, you'll see swipe actions. Swipe left to dismiss, right to show menu, or right to dismiss, left to show menu. I kind of wish they would have made it so that a third option was there and have the old Android piece. You could swipe either way and then do a half swipe in order to show the menu, but hopefully that's something that will be coming in one of the later betas. Now under that as well, you can see you have the ability to control notification dots, the new notification bubbles, which are not implemented uh, you know, in its shipping state right now. You have to enable them with an ADB command, which we'll be going into in a little bit. Uh, but you have the options, and again, this is kind of redundant, uh, but to change notification sound uh, and also swipe fingerprint for notifications. So you know these actually appear in different places throughout the settings. So it's kind of confusing that they're putting settings in multiple spots, but I guess if it fits here, they're gonna go ahead and put a second set of menus here. So those are some of the major changes that we've noticed uh, with it without using ADB commands to show some of the other ones. There was one more thing that I wanted to note I wanted to mention. Uh, if we look really closely here at the camera to focus, you see how the battery icon looks there. I'm going to go ahead and open up Google Hangouts. 
uh, to kind of show the same thing. And you can see the difference in the uh, the battery icon there. It looks like they've made it uh, they've made it hollow now, so you can actually see through the battery, whereas before it had that darker gray color. It's just a little change here that I think makes the UI look a lot nicer, just to kind of spruce it up. And I think it fits a lot better with the Google Sans or Product Sans uh, placement that they're having throughout the rest of the OS. So now we'll go into some of the changes, um, you know, the bigger changes, I think, that we've noticed here with this build. The first one is the gestures for, for uh, controlling the UI. Now, this is the probably the one thing I'd probably say that maybe you don't want to update to of this because it is still kind of broken. Um, but I'll show you how it works now. So I have my uh, notific or my navigation bar set to its default state. Uh, you know, you have your back button uh, and your home button. And normally if you swipe to the left, you get the menu for recents. And I was actually swiping there, but it didn't do anything uh, because now they're doing basically just like iOS, where you can swipe across the bar and go through your recent applications. Now, it's, it seems to be working fine here, um, but it breaks a lot to the point where like it just won't respond or won't do anything. It just it's, it's not the most finished product, which is something we expect in these betas, but it's something I wanted to notify you about that. It's it really not in the finished state right now, but you can swipe through them pretty cool. Uh, just like iOS, uh, you know, swiping across the bottom, and you can kind of see there how it oddly goes back to my home app it's like i said it's still really really broken but you can get to the old uh way of uh you know the recents menu by swiping up so now you don't have two different ways of getting to recents i really like that change i like where they're heading with this change it it just doesn't work yet <laughs> um Another change that we noticed, uh, I don't have the ability to show it off here, but we do have it on the uh, XDA portal, uh, is that it actually can hold uh, dual SIMs active uh, at the same time. So your electronic SIM that's built into the device, as well as the physical SIM uh, in the SIM tray down at the bottom of the Pixel 3 here, uh, you can use them at the same time. So that's a pretty neat change. You know, the uh, iPhones just recently got that update. So it's good to see Google doing that as well. I know a lot of people who travel can really use that kind of an addition. All right, so now we're gonna show off one of the changes that you can do with an ADB command. I have the link in the description, but uh, it looks like Google is toying around with basically a direct ripoff of the iOS gesture system, including the gesture bar. Now, uh, and I know there's gonna be a lot of people complaining about this, but I am totally on board with it because Google's gestures are really terrible. Um, so just rip off something that works. Just it works just to use it you know so it looks like that might be what google was at least looking to offer all right so you notice the uh gesture bar just changed down there to this whole ios gesture uh now this does not change the height of the uh the status bar there um because it's still full height let me go into the settings where you can actually see that uh, in effect there you can see it's still the same height it's not making it shorter like it does on ios um and when i say it's kind of broken you can kind of see why I can't go home. Uh, I can go swipe up to go into my recents, uh, but I can't go home with it. Um, I can swipe across it to switch through apps, um, but I don't have a back button either. Uh, so it looks like this is definitely something that's still in very, very, very early development uh, that we we're able to find on this build. Uh, but it is pretty neat nonetheless to see this is something Google's working on. You know, if they can shrink that uh, navigation bar down here to just being that that pixel, you know, that couple pixel high bar, I'm fully on board with that change because it is a really, really awesome change. If you remember in my last gesture video uh, that I just put out a few days ago, uh, you have down here these options for theming. Uh, we actually found there's going to be a brand new Google Pixel theming application that's going to be available in the Play Store. And once it's installed, it's going to activate it on the device. Very similar to how we saw the Pixel Sounds uh, stub appear before the app was actually officially available and usable. Uh, the same principle is going to apply here. So Google will be bringing these theming options uh, very similar or at least uh, Michelle has found, uh, will be coming over to the Google Pixel through a theming app. So that's really cool. I'm really hoping Google develops that further and allows third-party developers and not makes it some kind of a locked thing. But to be honest, I'm fine with just being able to change accent colors and dark modes. And the dark mode is still available on this build, uh, you know, by using either the battery uh, setting here. Uh, if you put your phone into the low battery mode, battery saver, sorry. If we go ahead and uh, just crank that up. Oh, probably because I'm plugged in. There we go. Oops. 
So we'll go ahead and turn on battery saver. You still got your dark mode and you can still enable it uh, through the ADB options there as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I'm gonna reset my status bar or my navigation bar here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show off some of the other things we noticed through ADB. All right, so I've gone ahead and reset my navigation bar back to its stock settings to go ahead and continue showing you some more changes. Uh, one thing to mention in Michelle's article, uh, in order to undo the iPhone-like uh, navigation bar on the bottom, just switch the number from a one to a zero with the ADB command, and it'll go ahead and switch it back to the way that you had it before. Uh, so continuing here, uh, this is the chat bubbles that we saw in the first beta that we got to play with that worked pretty well, uh, but it looks like they've been innovated a little bit more here and are very close to becoming a user facing feature. Um, but I have found some pretty deal breaking bugs that I don't really recommend people using this, but we're going to go ahead and show it off anyways. So I've got them enabled with an ADB command. I'm gonna go ahead and send myself a message from my other uh, Hangouts account, and you can see that pops up here. Uh, so in these bubbles, you can see uh, my Nest camera is one of the things that's supported. And it'll ask me, do, do you want to allow bubbles from this application, allow or block? I wanna see them. Uh, and if I wanna open it full, I can go ahead and click that and it'll open up the notification of my front camera. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that one and I'm gonna drag it down to the bottom and I can dismiss that notification individually. Uh, so now I've got Google Hangouts and uh, Google Hangouts, I'm gonna go ahead and allow that notification and you can see my text message that came in. Uh, now see, those are the weird things that happen. So I tapped it and it like closed and then it goes ahead and opens the application. It's it's really, really odd. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and send another uh, text from my other phone. That's gonna go ahead and pop up there and this time we're gonna actually reply to it and uh, you can see there that it's 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 not fully functional because I can't see you know the uh, the keyboard's hiding the message here so still something that's very very in beta but there's some other big bugs that are going to make this not usable as well. You can send it from there and of course your conversation shows up here in the conversation view that you've seen uh, in the past with uh, direct replies from the notification. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss this. Uh, so this is the, some of the issues that I've noticed here. Uh, if your screen is off and uh, you get a notification, I'm gonna go ahead and message that through. You can see that the always on display turned off and uh, that's actually the system UI crashing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wake the display and you'll notice here, um, I don't have any notifications. Uh, so it's not showing me that I've got a notification. If I unlock it, it's not showing me up here that I have any notifications, uh, but those notifications are in here, including one that wasn't existing, but was dismissed. Um, so this is, it, it's very, very broken right now. Um, you know, maybe we might find some ADB commands that'll enable this to be a usable state, but right now it's, it's really not something that I recommend you using. Uh, with all of these things, uh, these uh, commands, I have a link over to an article that you can go ahead and enable them as well as disable them once you're done playing with this kind of broken feature. All right, so I've gone ahead and disabled the chat bubbles. Uh, just for future reference, you probably want to remove any chat bubbles you have up uh, before turning it off or you can't turn them off anymore. But I'm going to just leave them up there just because I have one quick thing to show you guys that's really neat. Probably one of my favorite features uh, in the second beta. Uh, and this is really geared towards iOS users. So you're probably familiar in iOS if you've used it, uh, that uh, you have the ability to scrub from a notification through your music and on the lock screen. And that's just not something that's been available in Android. Uh, well, it is now, and it's actually pretty awesome. So if we bring down notification there, I should have probably got a brighter one, uh, but you can see the scrub bar there and uh, you can just go ahead and tap it and slide it wherever you want to. Now you gotta be sure, uh, sometimes it doesn't work when you initially tap it. You kinda have to press and just, not press and hold, but just kinda tap there for a moment longer than a tap. Uh, and you can go ahead and change that. And this looks like it works with any applications as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dismiss that notification here in a minute. And uh, it's really kind of iffy about how it dismisses itself. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and bring up a, a Pocket Cast uh, notification. And you can see that the scrub bar is there as well. So this isn't something that the application has to support. This is something that's implemented at the uh, OS level for any media applications that are running. So that is a really awesome change. And uh, again, just to kind of show you there that it is working on the lock screen, um, you know, you can go ahead and scrub through uh, your track from the lock screen as well. So that's a really awesome change, a really excellent change that they've made in uh, Android. And I'm hoping to see a lot more of those kinds of changes. So there are two more quick things we're gonna show you guys, uh, changes that we noticed here with the, uh, with the OS. These are very, very minor, just 
the kind of the way they do things. So in settings now, uh, if you go over here to system, you'll see there's config contextual cards. Um, we really don't know what that does yet. It, it really doesn't show you anything. It just says tap to force card recollection, recollection. So I don't know what that does yet. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be user facing, uh, but again, it's a beta. So you're going to have these kind of things. Uh, the second thing is if you go into about phone, uh, you can actually see up here, it shows my Google account. Uh, so that's really, really nice to have. It shows the linked Google account on the device. And if I tap in there, uh, you can see there my Google account information and my accounts that are syncing. This is really helpful uh, for people who have multiple Google accounts on their device and they don't know exactly which one is the one that's set up for security purposes. So a really neat change there uh, to kind of show you which Google account is activated. So those are all the changes we have found so far in just the first few hours hours of the uh, beta 2 of Android Q. Stay tuned to xdaydevelopers.com and this YouTube channel if we find some more awesome changes, which I'm sure we will find buried in the settings and Michelle is digging already. Uh, we will be sure to put out articles and videos discussing those. Uh, in order to get notifications of every single one of our videos, turn on that notification bell, get subscribed if you aren't already, and leave this video as a like as it really does help us out. Uh, until next time, for XDA TV, I'm Daniel Marchena.